Welcome. In this lecture, we are going to be learning how to make our game more fun. And we're going to be doing this by creating a composite collider so that this ring cannot be penetrated by the balls. And we're also going to be making it so that we can spawn balls into the world so that we can actually fire. And we're going to make this target move. So this is a very exciting lecture. So let's get stuck right in. So at this point in making a game, we typically want to ask ourselves, what is the least fun element? Well, for a start, I can't quite see what's going on in this game because of the location of the camera. So I'm going to zoom out somewhat and change into perspective mode so I can see what's going on. And for some reason, I'm in wireframe. That must have been some of the work I was doing earlier. So I'm going to switch back to shaded. And let's play to see what's going on. OK, our camera is over here. That's what I'm trying to change. So let's get the top down view, go back into isomorphic projection mode. And we can swivel our camera around. For some reason, the camera preview isn't working. I haven't figured out why that is. But about there should do it. We should be able to see both that and the ring. OK, not quite. Now let's see it from the side. We might see why. Yep, the ring is too low and the camera too high. So let's bring it along. Basically, we want both objects to be within these bounds of the camera's box. And there you go. What we can see now is both the ring and the cannon itself. Perfect. Now, what isn't fun about this game at the moment? Well, firstly, we uh, are not able to shoot into the hoop. That is not particularly fun. So let's rotate this hoop around and make it as we intend to, which is, or at least how I intend to, which is a Quidditch style game where you've got the hoops up here. At least that's how I think about it. You might think about different types of arcade game. There you go. It's going through the hoop. The goal is scored. So that's a lot more fun already. Uh, I'm going to move the camera so that we can see that hoop because, as you can see, it's gone out of sight again. So go up to the top, select the main camera, and move. I'm going to go for more of a Canon side perspective, uh, something like that. Let's just check in the game preview. Yep, it seems to be about right. It needs to be a bit higher, though. So we'll move it up to about here. Yeah, that seems to work if we hit play. There we go, much more fun. Now, while that is much more fun, it the longevity of the game kind of dwindles because we can't fire any more projectiles. We've only had one in the scene. So what I want to show you is how we can get to firing more projectiles. Basically, we need to make a prefab out of this projectile. And remember, for those of you who might have forgotten, to do that, we need to drag it into our project pane. So we go to Assets. I'm going to put it in the Physics Assets and in under Projectile. And I'm going to drag the projectile in there. And that makes me a projectile prefab. Perfect. That's exactly what we need. Now, the projectile that I have in the world, I'm going to use as a spawn point. So this is basically a marker in the world saying, where should I spawn? Now, you don't have to worry too much about the details of this. It's just about this spawner script here. That's how it expects it to work. So spawner, um, projectile spawner.cs is the script we're going to be using to create a spawner. So what I'm going to do is actually break this projectile. To do that, you go to Game Objects, Break Prefab Instance. And don't worry, that doesn't break the projectile um, instance that we've saved. All it does is says that this game object in the world is no longer linked to the projectile in this file. So now we can do all the modifications to it that we want. So I'm going to make this projectile spawner. And I'm going to remove the sphere collider. And I'm going to remove the rigid body. Because basically, we don't want it to be interacting that way with the world. Now, the reason I didn't start from scratch there was simply because I think it's the right shape. It's the same size as the projectiles are going to be spawned into the world. So it helps us visualize it. And also looks like the bottom of a cannon. So that's kind of helpful. So I'm going to position it a little bit more accurately at the bottom of our cannon. And I'm going to have to add a projectile spawner script here. So remember that we click and drag from the script onto our inspector for that component. So now I have a projectile spawner. And you see it has an empty property here, the projectile prototype, which is expecting us to drag in our projectile here, our projectile prefab, as it were. So let's bring that in. And there you go. You see the property accepts it. Now if we hit play, 
you'll notice no ball gets spawned. But if we hit click, which is the fire key, I guess, um, we end up firing projectiles. And we can fire lots and lots of projectiles like this. Excellent. It's certainly looking a lot more fun. But there's no challenge without a moving hoop. So the moving hoop, very easy to achieve. Uh, there's already a script for this. Go to physics asset pack, go to hoop, and you'll find that there's a moving target script. If we just click and drag that onto our goal, then we should see our goal start to oscillate. Now, obviously, this is ridiculously hard. Um, but one thing you'll be noticing here is that the hoop is passing right through these spheres. It's not nudging them out of the way, which means that we are able to, in fact, score a goal in spite of the fact that the hoop is moving ridiculously quickly. And that's what I'd like you to fix. I'd like you to make a composite collider. That's because the hoop obviously can't have a normal collider because it has a hole in the middle and colliders have to be convex but you can make a composite one made out of lots of colliders. So use capsule or box colliders. Quick quick tip, quick reminder. You can create a collider by going to add component and then capsule collider or box collider. But you want to do this on an empty game object that is underneath goal. Remember that we did this before using our scoring trigger. This was an empty game object that we then added these scripts to. We added a goal scoring script and we added a mesh collider to it. So in the same way, you could add a capsule or a box collider. Then I'd like you to use the scale tool and the collider's properties to scale it and duplicate this around the hoop to create a ring so that you can't penetrate that ring. And then play test it. Does it work? Does it knock balls out of the way as you expect? Are there any problems with this? So pause the video and have a go at that challenge. Okay, welcome back. That was a rather full and big challenge, but I hope you all rose to it because it's very important to at least try. Uh, even if you don't manage, you can then watch how I do it. So let's zoom in on our goal. I'm going to hit into isomorphic mode and go from the front because this is going to be easier for creating all these colliders around the ring. Then I'm going to switch into wireframe mode so that I can easily see the colliders that overlap. And I'm going to right click on goal and create an empty prefab, which I'm going to re re immediately rename to collider. And then I'm going to be using capsule colliders for this. Now instantly you see this is far too big. If I double click on it, it zooms me out all the way here, whereas my goal is much, much smaller. Now, the reason for that is that we had to scale that goal up from something rather small in the first place. Or, um, in fact, sorry, it's the other way around. We had to scale it down from something rather large. So if we select our scale tool and bring this, oh, I don't want the goal selected. I want the collider selected. And we bring this down to a sensible scale. There we go. That's much more sensible. And now we can change things like the height and radius. But I think if you look, yes. So it's got currently a height of, there we go. We want the height to be around five, I think, for the right aspect ratio. And I'm going to leave the, uh, it needs to be a bit smaller. That seems to be about the right aspect ratio. Let's go back to our forward view. And... Let's see, I want to, I've just moved out of my forward view. I want to scale this some more. So let's scale it down. And now it's looking about right for one segment for me. So I'm going to move this across to be the starting point of this segment. Now I can just duplicate this, that's Control D, or you can right click and duplicate as I've been doing before. And you can move this across to the other side because that's identical. Then Control D. And this time we need to rotate a little bit. So let's rotate like that. Doesn't matter if it's exactly right. You would probably spend more time on this if you were making a fully fledged game to make it exactly perfect. And again, I'm going to duplicate and move it to the bottom. Now I've got to do ones for the corners and we will be done. So I duplicate, I 
rotate by about 45 degrees. And in fact, you can see here, I could put in exactly 45 degrees in Z. So why don't I do that right away? Like so. Then I will move and position it here. Duplicate and move it over to the other side. And then we duplicate one more time and rotate and what should it be approximately equal to? Minus 45, so let's just do that exactly. Minus 45, boom. And then we've got this collider that I'm going to move to the corner and duplicate it over to the other corner too. Now let's have a look at all those colliders. If I select the goal, you can now see that all those colliders are forming a ring with more or less uninterrupted uh, breaks around it. This needs to be moved a little bit. So that basically we can't penetrate that ring with a ball. Now let's test that out, let's test out what we're, what we're saying there. I'm gonna save my scene, hit play. And now what we should get is, there you go, as I shoot, balls are definitely getting knocked out of the way by my collider. Now it is probably moving way too fast and that's why some are still getting through. So that's an important thing to notice about physics by the way. I kind of almost glossed over that but we've got a goal here and we've got rigid bodies firing towards it and a lot of them are going through. Now there's two reasons that might be. The first one is that we are moving something with a collider that doesn't have a rigid body. So we should always add a rigid body to something that needs to interact with physical objects and moves. However, we don't just want a normal rigid body because if we do that and play, then we're gonna expect it to fall. Um, it doesn't, but that's because we are moving it and that's confusing it a little bit. But what we do wanna do is tick is kinematic and that will mean that we are responsible for moving it. So now if we hit play, we should Okay, we're seeing a few more balls get knocked out of the way much, much quicker, which makes sense, actually, because now the simulation of physics is happening on both sides. So that's one thing that we want to, to notice. And then the other thing, the other problem is that it's moving too fast. And this is due to, if you look at our moving target script, we've got a time per cycle of one second. That's a very fast time per cycle. So let's put it more like five seconds per cycle. And now it's a much more manageable speed. And you see things are getting knocked out of the way a lot more easily. And things do go into the hoop, obviously, because, well, it's passing by and the hoop is not that large. But we're also seeing things knocked out of the way. So that's perfect and enough for this lecture. So when you are comfortable with creating these composite colliders, then we can move on to the next lecture, or a quiz first, in fact. So move on to the quiz and then the next lecture. Don't skip the lectures or the quizzes. <laughs> I'm getting the two confused. Bye now.